are you? Nice to meet you. Same here. So, tell us a little bit about the film and how was it was like your husband? Um, working with my husband was very natural. We just have a, a short hand. Guy likes to call us the monster with two heads. <laughs> We're very similar people. Um, we have a very similar taste, um, and it was just really easy. I, didn't, I really didn't even think about it. People have been asking me, "What's it like to work with your husband?" I've never even had a question. Did you find out that you are the same party? Say that. Did you find out that you are the same way? Um, no. At home, when I have you know thoughts or ideas, I. Yell at him across the house. Whereas when we were on set, I would sometimes text him, <laughs> text it to him, or say it to him in code in Hebrew because um, we both. Uh, but no, I mean it was a like I said, it's just a very organic, natural relationship. Uh, no, I got it. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I feel like if this movie can be seen by people outside of our room, the chamber, um, I think that that would be really good to see. So it's a great movie, you know, not just in LA or New York, it's very really And I ask if someone, you know, who's this extreme, Brian grew up in such an extreme way, you know, can a person like this be forgiven for, for things that they did? I think that that's a, a question you always grab with all of the human history of reaction to Brown's work. I know that I, in my mind, have never been a client. I know other situations I don't know, but in this experience, um, I've had to question a lot of things in my life and have come out the other end and see Brian as a human being rather than an ideology. Yes, yes. Um, it's been an overwhelming year uh, for us. <laughs> We, uh, we, we came upon this true story in 2012. We, we met the real Brian Widener. Um, Guy was living in Israel. I was working in uh, Vancouver. We flew to meet him. He'd never met Jews before. We'd never met a skinhead before. Um, and to think like, you know, from that day leading to today, um, that, you know, just by sheer force of will and belief that this was a story worthwhile telling has been unbelievable for us. So we're overwhelmed, but in the best way possible. And given everything that's happened in the political climate right. today, I mean, we just had a synagogue shooting in Cali, California. This story is more relevant than ever. And it's got a message of redemption. How important is the message of this film? What I think Guy did beautifully in this film is that he asked the question. He doesn't give answers, you know, because as the grandchild of Holocaust survivors, you know, I'm Jewish, much of my family was wiped out during the Holocaust. I sometimes don't know, can I forgive? Can you forgive? But I think that what Guy does beautifully, what he did in this and also in the short film that this was sort of an expansion of, is he helped us look at these people as human beings. I think if we just look at them as an ideology, we're in trouble because they look at us as an ideology. So to look at someone as a human being and see their damaged past and how they were maybe, you know, scratched to such a degree that this was the only way that they could find comfort and warmth and food and clothing and have empathy, asking can you have empathy? That's really all Guy does. And I, I think that we have to ask each other these questions in today's climate. And you say that the film asks the questions, can you forgive, can you have empathy, but it doesn't answer the questions. Yeah. Did, did the question get answered for you? Were you yeah, over the course of, you know, seven years that I've known Brian and known people in his quote-unquote gang, I think I do forgive him. I think that he is a man who is, he's not a perfect man, you know, he has, uh, he has his demons, he will always have his demons, but I, I do, I forgive him. I, I've seen that he is, um, you know, someone who sees the air of his ways.